Is old dads more like bad dads? Bill Burr's directorial debut. Does it bring the laughs? We'll explore next on this episode. episode what am i even talking about it's just another chat with your main man here my name is z i am here with our reviews will kill you and uh we're here to talk a little bit about some of the controversy around old dads i watched it i have reviewed it and i have some thoughts so we'll talk a little bit about it maybe we'll get some conversation going if you can give us a like and subscribe we do appreciate that but let's talk about old dads i think you're gonna find the reviews just as funny as the show movie perhaps if you didn't know bill burr has a con some sort of contract with netflix he does an animated show which i think is called f is for family so they said hey bill we like your cartoon how about we pay you more money and you can direct and write a movie and bill burr was like that sounds great fellas so he went and directed a movie about himself and a bit of his, his sketch comedy. So if you know think about Bill Burr, he is an angry man. He likes to go on angry rants. And most of the time he's funny, but can he stretch it out to an hour and a half movie? Well, let's take a look at s at least this review. To give you a vague idea of the plot, I, I do have some pretty heavy criticisms of the movie while I did enjoy it. I would give it a recommend. I think you should watch it. Uh, he goes off on those people who are triggered about whatever, all sorts of things in this politically correctly charged society we live in. This is from Variety. Old Dad's Review. Bill Burr directs a Gen X dad comedy that's really a drive-by attack on all things correct. Bill Burr, Bobby Cannaval, and Bokeem Woodbine are LA dads stuck in a culture they never made. And I think some of it's a little too on the nose. Um, but overall, I think it's funny. I think the fundamental premise is a little screwed up. Like, it just... It's well directed. But there are things, especially as a writer, that, that just don't connect. There are characters that appear in the show, like, appear in the movie that have important roles that just disappear and are never spoken of ever again, as if they vanished into the wild they were blipped out of existence but the fundamental premise is that bill burr and his three partners owned a company for 24 years which they then sold and became employees of the company so that bill burr could send his firstborn child his firstborn son as he is an older dad to a preppy new age college and the wife keeps blaming him for this was his decision yet he continually fights with her that the kids should have been in public school, but she keeps saying, no, you pushed for this to be in this private school. I don't understand. That premise doesn't work for me. So, um, whatever. And then they don't really tell you, but you eventually find out that Bill Burr's wife is pregnant with a second child. You know, you have this, I think he says he's 54 or something in this, and he has like a four-year-old or five-year-old and then he has another kid on the way like bro stop having kids you're, you're gonna have some problems not all them kids are gonna learn to read and write my friend but apparently his other friends all have kids and then he has his, his other friend who's an attorney Bo Keep Woodbine which I th all thought they were great I don't typically like Bobby Cannaval. I thought he was fantastic in this and Bo Keep Woodbine also fantastic the, the, it's it's well written it's fairly tight, but I don't know that it knows what kind of message it's trying to make. Because Bill Burr is angry, but he doesn't know why. He knows why he's angry. He's angry at the culture, but he also feels like he needs to live in the culture. And he's like, I hate all these things that are woke, but at the same time, I need to hang out with all these woke people. It's like somebody who's having an argument with themselves and doesn't really understand how to resolve it. And the only thing that really gets him into trouble is he has a big mouth that he occasionally vents on people, which is inappropriate at times, but funny. But also, there's a part in the movie that's uh, like a pinnacle part that like kind of uh, causes a relationship strife for him, 
where ultimately it was his wife's fault and he gets the blame for it and it doesn't make any sense because if she had just handled the situation differently, there never would have been because she claims that she was humiliated, but she's the one who caused the humiliation. So like I said, there's some writing flaws in this, but overall I laughed. I, you know, comedies are, there's not a lot of them at this point, And this one is pretty funny. It's not hilarious. I'm not going to remember it. I'm not going to go, Oh my God, Bill Burr. What an amazing movie he did about his comedy act where he's angry. Cause like I said, in my 10 second review, he goes from being an angry guy to being like a mildly less angry guy. And if that's the character growth arc that you're going for in your movie, you probably want to rewrite your movie. Like he couldn't pick a lane because ultimately he doesn't know what lane he wants to be in. He sees all these things he doesn't like and wants to fight them. But at the same time is like, maybe there's some merit to those. But at the same time, I still don't like them. But at the same time, maybe it's like the best example is there's a scooter. So there's these guy there's a guy riding a scooter and he curses out the guy riding the scooter and he offends people. But at the end of the movie, it's a pay it's a setup a payoff, right? He rides the scooter and realizes how great the scooter is to get around town by being as obnoxious as the people who were before them, like the ones that he was screaming at. So it's like old man yells at clouds, realizes clouds bring rain. And but at the same time, at the end of the movie, he's like, well, I still don't like those woke people. And it's like, bro, pick a lane. You either hate the Wokies or you don't hate the Wokies. So ultimately, it's a bit of a confused, mildly forgettable movie. Uh, well, let's look at the, the Rotten Tomatoes. Here's the, the controversy that I see that I think is kind of interesting. The critics hate this movie absolutely hate it while it's not Chappelle level hate they do hate it but and the audience seems to like it I don't give it as high of a rating as they give it I would say it's like a C plus maybe like a B minus maybe laugh a couple times not hysterical it's not a classic movie I'm not gonna remember it two days from now um but critic consensus with old dad's Bill Burr shows sign of promise as a filmmaker but they're largely muffled by his fitfully Funny screenplay's reliance on tired jokes about generational divides. Like I said, old man yells at clouds. If you're a Bill Burr fan, then old dad's brand of culture clash comedy should be good for plenty of solid laughs. Here's where I really like the reviews. And there's no disparity between the audience and like a fake audience score. But that's a pretty big golf, 24 to 88%. So that the, the critics hate this. Um, a boorish, obnoxious, vulgar comedy. Since it can't come or claim any other great distinction, might as well have been expressly written to break the all-time record for the use of the f bomb in a major studio movie. It doesn't do that. They don't. I don't think it's excessive cursing. This one is at least try to be relevant, Mister Burr, instead of telling jokes recycled from an old episode of According to Jim. That's pretty brutal. Only thirty-eight critics went for this. Even the good reviews. This is a fresh review. A vulgar and unfunny comedy. Here's another fresh review. and a, The writing sometimes collapses into overkill, but sometimes precisely on point. It just, it's weird. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty good review. Jennifer Green from Common Sense Media. Old Dad's director, co-writer, star, Bill uh, Burr, understands the hypocrisy of some behavior among both millennials and Gen Xers, and there are a handful of very funny joke, of very funny lines in here. I agree. You know, that's pretty much part of it. But as a writer, again, it completely collapses because the premise is they sell their their they sell their business making uh, retro retro jerseys, and then that company is taken over. So they got they got they get paid and then they get to work for the company and then they hire in some millennial kid who comes in and turns it into a lifestyle brand and then again this is the plot and spoilers they ultimately get fired for being un PC 
And what's weird is there's a pretty major character who follows them. And as soon as that guy's fired, you never hear from him again. It's as if he never existed. And then they run into the guy who used to, who was running the company who did fire them and he gets fired. And not only does he get fired, but when they run into him, they, they plan on beating him up, but they realize like, look, his life is also, he's in trouble and has problems and they, and they try to lift him up. The man literally risks his physical body and getting beat up to help them out. And then he just disappears and they don't like acknowledge that he helped them. They do nothing. They just go back and do their thing and never acknowledge the guy ever again. Weak screenplay is what I could say. Um, weak character motivations. He's just angry because he's angry. They set up this whole thing about him seeing therapy, but then at the end of the movie, he doesn't go to see therapy till the very end. Like they never meet a therapist. It, it's just it's very weird. So the writing's a little janky, and then the only thing that I'll say that's it's mildly amusing to me is it's kind of an old school comedy because they end up at a strip club and there's like naked chicks all over the place. So there's a lot of TNA in this. Uh, one of the best jokes is this young girl. She's on her knees, like crawling around, picking up ones, and she and she hears that Bill Burr's his you know wife is pregnant. And she goes, oh, my God, you're so lucky. Congratulations on having a child as, as she's raking up dollar bills. It's, like, so pathetic. But it's just weird because just in comedies and in, in movies, it's pretty rare to see nudity unless there's something, a reason for it. And there was no reason for this. It was just, let's put in random nudity, which I'm okay with. But it was just very weird, out-of-place comedy. It's number one on Netflix. I recommend you should watch it if you like bill burr like anti-woke comedy i guess but at the same time the man seems very conflicted because obviously he's very wealthy living in la because that's what this is about and really struck he hates the people he lives around in his real life i'm sure and is like yeah but i gotta work with these people so he has to compromise but doesn't really know what he wants to do with himself so Check it out. Let me know what you think. Give it a rating. I would love to hear what you guys think. If you thought it was too anti-woke or just anti-woke enough or whatever you think, let me know. I'll check out the comments. Join us. We have memberships. We have super chats. Please support the channel. We're trying to build something great here. We'd like to thank all of you for doing so and um, for hanging out with us. We do have a live uh, stream that we do here on YouTube. Actually, we do a bunch of them, but we have a podcast that you can catch Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also catch the audio version on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. We're just doing so many things, it's exhausting. So, but you know us. We keep going, and you keep going. But we are on to the next one. Mm -hmm.